going to a session about the relationship of venture investment in the Bitcoin SV ecosystem. I've got a great panel with some people both in studio here in New York with me as well as virtually. I'll introduce them quickly and then let them each talk for a moment about uh, their various roles in this ecosystem. So quickly, it's Paul Rajgod, who is Managing Director uh, for Private Equity of the Air Group, Calvin Ayer's family office. Zach Resnick, who is Managing Partner of Unbounded Capital. And appearing virtually on our stage, we have two other participants that would be Bradley Rotter, who is co-founder of the Entanglement Research Institute, and Jan Smit, who is general partner of Two Hop Ventures. I think they'll be appearing on our digital screen momentarily. There they are. Great to see you, gentlemen. So let's start with uh, our people in studio. Paul, will you uh, introduce yourself and what you do? Sure. First of all, socially distanced hello to my uh, okay. New York fellow panelists and to Bradley and Jan, good to see you wherever in the world you might be and uh, shout out to uh, my colleagues back in Antigua. Uh, so yes, it's Paul Rajgod, I'm Managing Director of um, Venture Investments at uh, Calvin Ayer's Venture Capital Group. Uh, we invest solely in companies building on Bitcoin SV's blockchain to take advantage of, as Calvin would say, its unique superpowers, which I think is a great way to sum it up. Zach, please introduce Unbound Capital. Hi, I'm Zach Resnick, uh, founder and managing partner of Unbounded Capital. Uh, we're a firm investing in the Bitcoin SV ecosystem across several funds, uh, making both venture investments as well as uh, we have hedge fund products. And uh, like Paul, we believe in the future of the Bitcoin SV ecosystem and, and companies using the technology. Our firm began not as a Bitcoin SV ecosystem focused fund, but as a more kind of opportunistic and general crypto and blockchain fund. And after we learned more about Bitcoin, uh, we felt the only choice of fiduciary we had was to focus in on the BSV ecosystem. Great, Jan, please tell us about Two Hop Ventures. Hi, Jamie. My name is uh, Jan. Uh, I'm a general partner and founder of uh, Two Hop Ventures, together with my beloved colleagues Alex, Jerry, and Adria. Um, we are registered and based in uh, in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Uh, we are a pure venture capital fund, so we only invest uh, traditionally into equity in startups. Uh, our main investments now are Senbi, Handcash, and Run. And uh, if people like them as much as we do, then come talk to us uh, to also own a share of these companies. Great. Now, Bradley, you are a new face to the Bitcoin SV ecosystem. A lot of our BSV community out there probably are wondering who you are. I want you to take a little mm -hmm. bit of time now to tell us about your business and investment experience and your journey to, in Bitcoin to getting here. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Uh, it's good to see you and hats off to you for this conference. Not not only is BSV going to change the world, but I think this CoinGeek conference has changed the way crypto conferences will happen in the future. It's amazing execution, and it's really fun to be involved. Um, I started out as a child. I started trading commodities at a very young age. And after, um, after West Point raced back to Chicago and helped pioneer an asset class called Financial Futures at the very beginning, I was on the floor of the Chicago Board of Trade and Chicago Mercantile Exchange where grown men yelling, kicking, screaming, shoving, and spitting. It was fabulous. Uh, those markets exploded, and as a, result, as a result of being in the right place at the right time, I began investing in another new asset class called hedge funds starting in 1982. So that's been my primary, uh, my primary activity until 9-11 when I began uh, focusing as an impact investor on, on companies that impact the security of the homeland. So it was that work in cybersecurity that allowed me to stumble onto Bitcoin in uh, 2000 and early 2013. And so I've been breathing the space since that time and involved in not only just Bitcoin, but uh, some really interesting projects like MadeSafe and Factum and Ethereum, Cosmos, Casper. So I've had a a wide range of, of, of interest in this in this space and I and I had not paid attention to BSV whatsoever until I met Zach Resnick and the team from Unbounded and um, it's those guys have uh, really impressed me I became an investor days after after meeting them and it's it's been a very interesting journey thanks to them learning about what I think is the most exciting 
crypto protocol that, that, I've, that I've seen. And what has gotten you interested, Bradley, we'll stay with you for a moment, in investing not just in unbounded capital, but in BSV Ventures yourself? What, what do you see as the upside opportunity for investors? I'm not, I'm not as excited as, as maybe the marketplace is on, 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 on BSV at this moment as, as money or as a currency. What I see that, that, I, that I've been looking for for many, many years is that the, the BSV and this vision of being the database for the world really makes sense. I've been troubled that we have 7,439 currencies. I don't know how many protocols. And it's, and it's exciting to see the Cambrian explosion of all these ideas. The analogy I use is it's like a thousand golf foursomes playing universal best ball. All these ideas are popping up and, and, uh, and, and changing the trajectory of, of how things are developing. But having a, having a stable BSV database for the world makes tremendous sense to me because it will allow us for the first time in history to price data and computation. And when you price something, it makes it more efficient, more usable. And I, I think what excites me the most is that BSV, as my pal George Gilder would say, it's, it's a layer of factuality. And, and that's just an amazing concept that, that's, that's going to change it's going to change everything. Well, we'll hear from George Gilder a little bit later. I hear he was in the house here already. Um, let's talk about specific types of things that interest you from an investment standpoint. In the BSV ecosystem, what kinds of things are you looking for that draw your attention for a BSV venture? Paul. Well, I'm going to maybe answer this a little bit differently than, uh, than my, my peers might. Um, the way we kind of look at the e ecosystem, there's been so much development uh, so quickly, it's an absolute whirlwind, and that's putting aside the conference, which is a whole additional layer of whirlwind. But um, yeah. there's so much development going on that I think the way that we look at it at Air Group is there's enough of a base layer now of companies and industries represented kind of at the early stage level in the ecosystem that we've sort of shifted our attention now uh, for the most part to what we call growth stage companies. And that means something different to different people, but I would say kind of like um, 20 to 30 employees upwards, you know, toward 100 employees type sized companies that already have good revenue, are, are probably break even or close to break even, and are now, you know, growing to that next stage. And what's great about these kinds of companies is when they come to um, the BSV ecosystem, in some cases from other blockchains, in some cases they're new to, um, to uh, blockchain altogether, you know, they're of a pretty material size, relatively speaking, they can bring a lot of transactions and um, you know, a lot of value uh, to the ecosystem. That's kind of where we shifted our focus. Okay. Zach, do you have any particular industry sector, technology area focus when you're looking for things at a man of capital? Yeah, our focus is on early stage infrastructure companies. Uh, so we like investing uh, you know, whenever we're able to, but ideally at the earliest possible stage, mm -hmm. being the first check-in and playing a meaningful role in helping you know, generally a, a single entrepreneur or founding team grow. And when we say infrastructure, that could be broad, that could be narrow, what do we mean by that? So we mean it in somewhat of a broad sense, but it's infrastructure that will allow other companies mm -hmm. to use Bitcoin. Um, and you know, some of examples of that are portfolio companies that everyone here knows, Handcash, Planaria, Run, Zoken Labs that Jack spoke at at length in his right. speech yesterday. And you know, what we like about all these different companies is that not only are they allowing people to use Bitcoin, but because of the ability to have micro payments and take very small amounts of each transaction, now these core infrastructure companies that allow developers to build on top of Bitcoin can actually capture a larger market share. So I think a big, uh, a lot of things, something at Silicon Valley looked back with internet investing and said infrastructure companies aren't good, they didn't really capture the value they created, similar to the way that internet protocols didn't capture the value they created, but because of the Bitcoin asset and the ability to take micropayments, I have high conviction that our infrastructure companies and broadly Bitcoin infrastructure companies will capture that value. Great, so you're still focused on early stage and then maybe can hand off to people like Paul at the Air Group uh, and uh, continue the journey Absolutely. with them. Um, Jan, obviously Two Hop Ventures has made some investments. I know you look at a lot of companies in the ecosystem. 
What are the types of things that developers and entrepreneurs out there can do to catch your attention? Uh, yes, Jimmy. Um, we also like the infrastructure layer uh, very much. Um, maybe just to build a little bit on what Zach was explaining, um, we see two big groups in the, in the infrastructure layer, one being the key managers, uh, so Handcash, Shanby, uh, Shanti, uh, and on the other side, the data managers uh, run, uh, being a good example, and Panaria and MetroCloud, because these companies will basically uh, provide the SDKs on which the applications can then easily build. So they are very important now to get in place so that we will see this growth in the ecosystem and the growth in the number of solutions. And they will then also be able to capture part of the value that all these apps are creating. So it's just necessary to do that at this stage, but also attractive in the longer term. And that's why we focus on this layer. Okay. And Bradley, since you're newer to looking at this space, I'm curious, especially given your very extensive investment background in other fields, what are the kinds of companies that would stand out to you in BSV? My investments to date in, in private companies have been sort of niche-related companies that, that have the great market potential. Um, for example, I'm the seed investor in a company called IPWE which is putting the world's IP system and patents on a blockchain. And when you do that, you, have, you then make it easy to do things that were kind of difficult to do before. You can license them, lease them, buy and sell them, hypothecate them, and so on and so forth. So that is infrastructure, important infrastructure. That infrastructure impacts, I think, the, the, not only the security, but the, uh, the, tra the trajectory of our uh, of our economic future, if you will. It's those kinds of things that I think will be tailor-made to the BSB chain, if you will. Infrastructure is, um, it, it's of course of interest. I was, uh, I was lucky enough to be in San Francisco when, when the internet broke out. And there are obviously lots of parallels between what we see here and what we, what we see with the early days of the internet. The differences that I do see that, that are somewhat troubling is that in the early days of, of financial futures and hedge funds and even the internet, it was it was really sort of a a cohesive effort that uh, that uh, that involved the participants and in, in the mission that they were on. And what's what's impressed me about the BSV crowd is that thanks to uh, unbounding capital, I've been uh, making the rounds and getting to know. The, the people from Enchain and uh, and Bayesian Group. I've, uh, I've I've had the opportunity to to have uh, three video calls now with with uh, Craig Wright, and I find this community to be incredibly open and close, and they they really seem unified, which which is really important, and I think that can be the differentiator between this protocol and the other protocols, which are. Um, which remind me of, of the, the political angst that we're, that we're seeing in politics now, that the, it's basically a food fight in the, in the crypto world. And you know what? That's, that's impacting its development. It's impacting its adoption. And so if, if I could make any, any recommendations to the BSB crowd, I'd say continue working as, as a unit, as, a, as, a, as an organized um, mission-driven protocol reminds me of the of, of the early days in the Revolutionary War where the Patriots were, were were hiding behind rocks and trees and 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 firing rifle shots. If 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 this continues, if if we continue to do that with BSB, it's clearly the the strongest and best protocol. We just have to get the message out. Well, there are certainly always areas of disagreement between people and companies, in, even in Bitcoin SV land. But I think it's clear from what I see that there is a committed uh, consensus to the mission of one world, one chain. So disagreements are welcome, but I think it is great advice to provide our ecosystem with the importance of driving together towards the vision of one world, one chain. And I am confident we are going to do that. So now, um, Paul, 
what has been your impression, especially since we've last had a panel discussion in February, about the um, quality and experience of the teams, the managerial teams, for example, the tech development teams you're seeing in BSV Ventures? Uh, that's a good question. I, I think generally, um, I find them all to be very impressive from a um, technology, from a technical point of view. Um, they've come up with some really interesting, unique solutions that are only possible on Bitcoin SV. And some of them also have the added benefit of um, having what I would call um, sort of knowing themselves, knowing what their skill sets are. And by that I mean, um, you know, we all have our limitations, we all have our strengths. And I think um, some management teams understand that and know that um, it might be that this is their innovation and their startup, but as they grow, perhaps their strongest skill set isn't selling isn't selling to other consumers and selling to other enterprises. Maybe they don't like managing teams. So maybe ultimately, I might be the founder and CEO of my business, but maybe ultimately I'm meant to be the CTO. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a certain, uh, it's arguably it's a skill set that, that, um, that some of them I think need to understand. A lot of them do. A lot of, a lot of management teams are great at the technology, but also understand I may need to bring in some outside help to really take on the world with my technology. Yeah, it actually takes a lot of self-confidence to be able yeah. to acknowledge, including to investors, that you're good at certain things but need help at right. other things. Zach, one thing I've noticed is that, especially a couple of years ago when I was speaking to a lot of uh, companies pitching for investment, that they would suggest they're going to create a token for their venture. Because there was this period of time, particularly during the Ethereum ICO craze, that everybody had a token. Um, how relevant is it to you whether a BSV venture is planning to create its own token and issue its own token? Well, I'd say it's relevant in that it's usually an incredibly strong negative signal. <laughs> that, that doesn't mean that, of course, there's not businesses with their own tokens or building token protocols right. where I, we wouldn't invest in that business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in fact, recently, as we all know, you know, Run announced kind of USDC on top of the platform, mm -hmm. and I view that as a positive thing. Sure. But I think in general, having kind of your own token, so to speak, is usually synonymous with a business that, or a protocol that's still kind of stuck in the 2017 ICO bubble. Uh, but you know, the same reason that initially attracted me to crypto and blockchain, are there new business models that are really only possible when you have a certain type of loyalty program token mm -hmm. or different types of you know, complex security tokens that we couldn't really have right now without blockchain? Am I excited about that in the future? Yes, but I think we're still a little bit off from the ability to do that both really more from a regulatory perspective. So for the most part now, if a business has their own token and it's not a token protocol, that would I would be quite skeptical. And generally that happens and you know, Paul, we've communicated about some of these companies where you know they already have their own token, they're thinking of moving to BSV. But you know, mm -hmm. now they already have their own tokens, they've yeah. made those promises and that it's even if they understand the technology of PSV, it, it serves as a big impediment to progress. Hey, Jan, what are your thoughts on that question? Yeah, very similar. Um, if there's no absolute reason <laughs> to, to need a token, then don't do it, right? You can incentivize people just with BSV or, um, or a stable coin. I mean, a stable coin is then probably uh, the exception. I mean, we are definitely uh, welcome any startup that is able to bring stable coin or various stable coins to the ecosystem. I mean, that, that we definitely need. And then the other tokens that I would hope to see are, are uh, tokenized assets, really, but real assets and, uh, and no Ponzi schemes. So I think we've been lucky in a way that it took us a while to get to a tokenization standard. Uh, we've maybe seen now the Ponzi schemes around us and realized that that's not something we want to have. And hopefully also when we have the tokenized standard or the tokenization standard, we will not start seeing those Ponzi schemes. But, well, let's see. Bradley, what do you think it will take to start getting some of the larger venture capital firms and uh, institutional investors interested in investing in Bitcoin SV ventures? Uh, good question. I just I want to hit real quickly the, the previous conversation that, uh, that, that Jack was uh, talking about, and that is the analogy I use with, with all of these all of these protocols and all of these tokens. It's the it, it, the analogy is going to Philadelphia, having to turn your currency into Philadelphia script, and then not being able to use your cell phone because it's a different network. It's inefficient, and it's not going to be that way. So I think we, we, again, can look back to the internet with TCIP, 
and realize that we need a, a fundamental channel. You can do all the fancy things you want with that channel, but it's, it's going to work better if there's one. I think the, um, I think the institutions are, uh, are coming along nicely, uh, as are the regulators. When the regulators really have begun to understand what these smart security tokens are all about, I think they're they're quickly coming to the conclusion that it's it's a regulator's wet dream to have these smart security tokens. The tokens know if they're restricted. The tokens know if they're vested. They know if they can only be sold to an accredited investor. So it's um, it it's I've been to this rodeo before on Wall Street, and it's extremely similar. I call it. Uh, I think what we're going through now with the blockchainization of of Wall Street was the same as the decimalization of Wall Street. And at the time it was controversial. People in on the street liked having securities priced at a quarter bit and a half because they were making a lot of money and there were a lot of resistance against decimalization, but it didn't matter. It was the march, it was the march of forward progress, and that has changed everything. I think it's very similar with the blockchainization of Wall Street. Now, keep in mind, the uh, people aren't going to make as much money as they think on the blockchainization of Wall Street because uh, just as in the decimalization of Wall Street, uh, there weren't many people that made money on that except for uh, Michael Bloomberg. Michael Bloomberg had a good business model. He took data for free from Wall Street and then sold it back to them. So, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's coming and institutional investors realize that just as regulators have begin to understand the power of these smart securities, so will, so will institutional investors. And they'll realize that, that their cost of operations, their cost of, of due diligence and, and regulation will, will be slashed in, in, to a great degree. Zach, I know you're out talking to investors, potential investors, about participating in what you do. Uh, in fact, you were here in New York at a family office you know, type meeting I know about. When you're talking to new investors and introducing them to Bitcoin SV, do you recommend that they consider investing in both BSV Ventures and the asset itself? Um, or, or what type of advice do you give, especially given what your firm does? Yeah, I mean, the answer is yes. So we have a few different products, but our, our main fund, our opportunity fund, is a hybrid venture and hedge fund, which has exposure not just to the top companies and entrepreneurs building on Bitcoin SV, mm -hmm. but also to the asset itself through, mm -hmm. uh, largely through derivative exposure. Mm -hmm. So that's something I definitely recommend and you know, have basically my entire personal net worth behind as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that you know, the highest kind of ROI on an investment always occurs at the lowest price. So if you want to have the highest individual ROI, putting risk aside, investing in the earliest stage companies, I think is going to be the best bet for that. But I think a lot of investors, myself included, you know, want perhaps more of a diversified portfolio of those companies, as well as something that is perhaps a lower ROI bet, but more of a sure thing, and that's investing in Bitcoin SV. And the way that I explain that investment is really, in some ways, it, it's like a venture investment in that mm -hmm. it's more of a commodity and less of, say, mm -hmm. a currency or a, a digital gold, where what you're buying is a call option on the value of the network in the future. So if you want to bet that all these companies are going to use the network in the future, I think a great way to have exposure to that is to buy the thing that's required to use the network of which there's a limited supply. So with our fund products and then, you know, I talk to a lot of investors that for whatever reason aren't able to invest in a fund like ours and you know, especially non-accredited investors. Mm -hmm. I still, you know, uh, of course this is not financial advice, but I think, Bitcoin, I think Bitcoin SV, mm -hmm. uh, the asset is a fantastic investment alongside ventures. Paul, um, what advice would you give to the entrepreneurs out there who are thinking of starting a ventures or already have about their process in preparing themselves and their documentation to pitch for investment uh, to maximize their chances the best? Well, I, I think um, one of the things that we really look for, and I, sh I should add that earlier when I said we're looking more and more at growth stage companies, that is true, but we're also still looking at uh, startups on a selective basis. But one of the things that we look for is for companies to try to think big, try to think beyond the current BSV uh, community, the current Bitcoin SV mm -hmm. ecosystem of users and of enterprises, 
and uh, you know, to borrow from uh, from Dr. Wright, in terms of the plumbing, we look for companies that are looking to use Bitcoin SV's um, capabilities as part of their backbone slash plumbing. And so think of, I think of a company like Chenti, which of course is a startup that we just invested in. Um, and we're looking at a company like Transmira, uh, who many of you know uh, did the, uh, the AR VR app and have a, a very interesting AR VR platform. Um, what these companies have in common, among other things, is they're looking to reach out to the world, right. to um, a bigger uh, global audience of customers, you know, kind of to the masses, and are bringing a Bitcoin solution to them that they may or may not know is Bitcoin. And you know, some of us think that's okay, some of us think it's not, but I think, um, I think it's perfectly fine because what they end up doing when they're successful is they bring the masses to Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage um, more entrepreneurs, uh, more startups uh, in the space to think about uh, looking at businesses like that, look at the, um, the business, uh, the RegTech business that presented a little while ago called uh, Company with K, um, that is also moving to Bitcoin SV and using Bitcoin SVs, I think it's part of their backbone, mm -hmm. to offer KYB, which is you know, KYC-like software for businesses and putting it on chain. And you, know, you can imagine they're not screaming from the hilltops necessarily to all of their customers, hey, this is Bitcoin. It's just they're using part of the capabilities of Bitcoin SV that only Bitcoin SV has to bring that solution to their customers. And so we look for things like that. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to add one comment on the venture capital sure. thing. Some, a couple announcements were made today that um, may have fallen below the radar because it's such an exciting day. But, um, and I don't want to take away any thunder from a company called Geospock that I know is presenting soon, but it's, it's their fault for putting out a press release this morning, so I'm allowed <laughs> to comment on it. Um, some of you may have seen that Enchain uh, is co-leading uh, five, uh, five million plus dollar uh, financing into this company, Geospock. That's an industrial internet of things, an analytics software company. But the other investors include a company, uh, a venture capital group called Global Brain out of Japan. Mm -hmm. That's backed by Sony Ventures. And also NTT Docomo, which I'm not mistaken, is one of the biggest uh, telecom companies on planet Earth. And so you can imagine they had very serious discussions at their board level and with their existing investors on this new group coming in. And although their press release didn't mention Bitcoin SV per se, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's led by Enchain and it mentions blockchain technology. So I think it's a good bet that we now have a slew of global giant VCs uh, that probably hadn't looked at Bitcoin SV, I'm going to guess, a whole lot beforehand, unless any of you, you know, would know otherwise. And now they're kind of in our circle following their investments that are probably building on Bitcoin SV. And I know Company um, announced a little while ago that they're building part of their RegTech platform on Bitcoin SV, and they also have some big VCs behind them that are surely new to BSV. So we may not have um, you know, Andreessen Horowitz or Pantera Capital or the likes of those anytime soon. They're busy investing in every new DeFi project that comes along anyway, so we'll let them continue to do that. But I think it's very exciting to have the likes of Bradley as well as these global giant VCs now in our midst, you know, competing, fighting it out, uh, I hope, for, uh, for investments in some great companies. Yeah, and to just briefly add to that, you know, we're kind of in the background having a lot of conversations with venture capitalists that invest in cloud and data businesses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like you said, I think kind of A16Z and the Panteras, they're going to be some, probably the la some of the last movers to Bitcoin SV based on their current investments. But I think folks that haven't really looked at crypto or blockchain before, but that invest in, in data businesses, uh, we're in conversation with many of them, and I think we're going to start to see some similar types of, you know, follow-on investments uh, from yes. folks at the, at the level of global brains and other you know, large uh, multi-billion dollar enterprises worldwide. Very good. Jan, let's turn to you. One of the interesting topics for debate recently on crypto Twitter is this question about whether or not Bitcoin SV ventures need venture capital funding or not, or whether they should be able to build a business model that is self-funding. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Is there a one-size-fits-all answer for BSV ventures? I think where it's coming from is that um, if you build something on a blockchain, it is probably a little bit easier to monetize thing than in the dot-com area. Mm -hmm. But still, I think what you can raise and therefore how much you can invest to grow is still by probably not enough. So I think venture capital companies like us are still very much needed um, to achieve the growth that the ambitious startups in this space want to achieve. Um, so, yeah. I'm, uh, when I hear them say that, um, I, I, one side I'd love it if they succeed um, and indeed 
are phenomenally successful and, and can raise a lot of money um, just from selling product, which would be, of course, fantastic. Um, but, but so far, I don't think we've seen that. And uh, yeah, we like to support the companies uh, instead of that. Paul, you have any thoughts on that topic? No. No, I do. I do. I do. Uh, I feel like, um, as far as I can tell from my career in finance and the work I've been doing as part of Air Group, there's really three buckets for people to raise money when they're starting up a business. They can either fund it themselves right. uh, with the, with the co-founders at the table, or they can bring in friends and family. Um, that's great. And if you can do that, you know, as Calvin recently wrote, fantastic. That's what Calvin Air did uh, in, earlier in his career. Mm -hmm. That's great. But if you need to, if you don't have those two options, you need more capital uh, and you need to hire developers, even if some of them, by the way, want to get paid in Bitcoin SV because they're believers in the platform and what, and what their, their companies are building, chances are you still need some fiat, you still need some capital to hire developers to pay the bills, to fund what will probably be many, many months, if not years of losses, just like any other business. I, I don't, I don't see why that's different on Bitcoin SV and in my experience from all the companies we've looked at, you know, there's always a certain period of losses they have to fund, and unless they have prior successes of, you know, nice exits where they did well themselves and can self-fund, they probably need to be in that third bucket. And I, I feel like maybe what this debate is about, and I'm speculating here, I feel like maybe certain people out there have had bad experiences with their own past mm -hmm. and uh, raising funds and thought the VCs maybe took too much capital, but uh, I'll give you an example of, uh, of how I think it's quite healthy and normal. Uh, you end up having these debates about valuation, uh, of course, and how much equity to give away True. at that valuation. Mm -hmm. And there's a company that I won't, I won't mention that uh, many of us here on this panel uh, were looking at um, uh, working together. Um, and me and my investment committee ended up feeling the valuation was too high for that particular company. We had to walk away, and I'm quite sure they ended up getting in, uh, investment support from um, one or more of the groups at this table here. And you know what that is? That's healthy and normal, and that's, that's the capital markets, whether private or public, and that's what the VC markets look like everywhere else. And so that's, that's normal. Zach? Yeah, I mean, just briefly, you know, I think the question of, like, whether it should or should not be, it's, that's kind of antithetical to the spirit of, you know, enterprise and competition and capitalism. I think it's what's fantastic about Bitcoin is that perhaps it requires less venture capital than before as a percentage. That's something I believe and I think that's fantastic. You know, I, I have another business and I've started several businesses that have been self-funded or making revenue early and I think that's great for certain types of businesses. But to say that, you know, you shouldn't be ambitious enough to want to raise more money to grow at a faster rate than you can organically, I don't really understand that, but I am happy that it is perhaps easier to start businesses without venture capital funding because of Bitcoin. Yeah, and, and different people are in different situations in life, right? Some people yeah. can afford to feed themselves while they're building a product and getting launched and trying to generate income, and other people cannot. Yeah. Um, Bradley, let's turn back to you. Um, what advice would you give to the Bitcoin SV entrepreneurs, companies that are watching this, about what they can best focus on in, in the short term to advance Bitcoin SV and bring more investment dollars in just the whole space? You know, it, it, as I look at this from a, from a high level, and, I, and I'm very appreciative to, to Zach and the people at Unbounded for helping, helping guide my thinking, but this is, this, is really, this is really the biggest thing that I've seen uh, since being involved in, in this space for eight years. I think, I think BSB could bring immortality. And by that I mean, how nice would it be if you could collect in, a, in an immutable chain all of the data of your life and with a button pressed at the end of the year have your, your taxes completed or upon your early demise, all of your data and pictures and so forth could be handed down to generations that, uh, that, that, that will come after you. The, um, one of the most exciting prospects, I think, of, 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 of an immutable blockchain that's, that's, that represents B, BSV is, is the field of accounting. The, this, is the, this is potentially the, the biggest development in the, in the field of accounting in 300 years. Since double entry accounting, this is triple entry accounting. And, I, and so I, I hope that, that some of the people listening you know, will, 
we'll think about these broader concepts of, of having uh, immortality in terms of uh, in terms of data and what that means and what that how that could improve our lives. You sound like you've been talking to Dr. Craig Wright often because he definitely <laughs> likes to talk about both immortality and accounting with the blockchain. I was going to say my 23-year-old son, who I started paying him his allowance years ago in Bitcoin. Son of a bitch is rich now, but he uh, he now thinks his father's pretty cool that he that he's had uh, that he's gotten to know Satoshi Nakamoto. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've just won the Cool Dad of the Year award here at CoinGeek. Everyone, Cool Dad of the Year award at CoinGeek Live 2020. Jan, so a uh, final thought from you, other than hopefully you're being a cool dad. Um, what uh, advice do you give to the Bitcoin SV ventures and entrepreneurs and developers out there that are starting their entrepreneurial journey? Uh, probably I'd say keep it simple um, because lately we've had quite a few teams uh, build, making plans which were so incredibly broad and covering everything. Um, I, and it just became impossible. I mean, they were a really good team. Um, they, everything, uh, the presentation was perfect. But what we just would like to see is a very focused product on a very focused market, preferably customers that they know, so that we know actually they can probably achieve it. And then they can grow from there and do all kinds of other things. But uh, boiling the ocean uh, on day one, uh, I think that's uh, something that, that every team should avoid. It's It's, it's already more difficult than you would think to, to get your product to a stage where you can launch it, where you can get uh, to onboard people. So keep it simple, keep it small. Zach, I know you and your firm have done quite a bit of research into Bitcoin SV, Craig Wright, and other related issues. Um, what have you learned as part of that process and what type of research and background checking um, about Bitcoin SV do you recommend new investors do before they start investing in this space? Well, thank you, Jimmy. I'm obviously biased having put together some of these yeah, resources, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, or more accurately, having incredible team members do most of this research. Mm -hmm. So something that I recommend to a lot of our potential investors and to all folks that are willing to put in you know, a few hours of time into really understanding things is reading our book, uh, mm -hmm. which was originally titled, you know, Why Multicoin Capital and the Crypto Consensus is Wrong. Uh, we have now updated that title to How Bitcoin SV Will Win, and we have that uh, book on our website, unboundedcapital.com. We also have a page there, which is the Bitcoin SV Overview, which is I send to folks, and that has some resources of ours, but it also has resources uh, from folks like CoinGeek uh, and, many, and the Bitcoin Association and many other places. And you know, as you mentioned, we've also done some more specific types of research thing on, you know, for example, one of our most popular pieces is why we think Craig is Satoshi and why that matters from an investment perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, every, every, all of those resources you could find at unboundedcapital.com and there's a bunch of great resources also on Bitcoin Association. Great, thank you. Um, and Paul, I know, you know you've been on your own journey with learning about Bitcoin SV for the past, I guess, couple years now. Um, now that you're deeper into the world, what excites you most about investment opportunities for Bitcoin SV? Well, this is maybe a general comment, but as we see more and more uh, of what, again, I'll call growth stage companies that have announced just at this conference that they're building on, building for, utilizing BSV's backbone for their technology, I think it's an amazing time. And I know often people get, um, well, crypto Twitter anyway gets very concerned about, hey, why isn't there enough development going on? But when I see the kind of announcements I see today of these really exciting growth stage companies backed by these incredible large global venture capital firms and, and other type, type of firms. I just feel like this is our time. It's happening. Bitcoin is growing up, uh, to use one of our prior yeah. themes. And I think, I think it's happening before our eyes. Mm -hmm. Never feels like it's happening quite quickly enough, but you know, these are big enterprises. Even growth stage companies are big enough enterprises that to shift part of their business, part of their software platform and so on, onto Bitcoin SV takes some time proof of concepts and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. But I think there's a lot of exciting things going on um, and it's happening right now before our eyes. Great, and with that I'll end this session with this particular thought for me, which is there's no one size fit all approach to anything in Bitcoin SV or in life, whether it's whether to take venture capital investment or not take venture capital investment, whether it's to pursue consumer adoption 
or big business enterprise adoption, whether it's to have a token or not have a token, whether it's to all agree on one thing or not agree on one thing. Life is great because it's full of diversity of approaches and ideas, and that's also what makes Bitcoin SV a total win. Thanks, Thank and I will close this session by thanking all of our panelists for this really engaging conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you.